Frank, thanks very much, mate. Pleasure, absolute pleasure. Thanks, thanks for winning the uh, dog in. Thanks for bringing Bobby as well. <laughs> I was going to say, I thought we were going out tonight. And then you I know, it goes everywhere with me. So, the only place I've not took him is to the nightclub. No, he'll be uh, fine. He'll be fine, yeah. yeah. But uh, it's just as well, mate, because my missus says to Frank McAvey straight up the road after it. Didn't go. But she oh, wanted you to come back as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, again. <laughs> <laughs> see all that stuff, won't you? See all yes. that, where's the birds and all that? Yeah. Does it annoy you? Because, just see, no. before I interviewed you, Frank, right? I spoke to a few people because you were before my time and yeah. what a player you were meant to be. And all you really get remembered for is this, where's John, the birds Johnny Watson kept me, you know, what he done, he kept me in the limelight for, for many years, but he's been doing me for about, oh, I don't know, 30 odd years Excuse now. Excuse the pun. Uh, uh, he's, been, <laughs> <laughs> he's, been doing, he's been doing my character, which is great, you know, and it's, to be honest, it's, it's the only good thing on it now. Uh -huh. um, he's, I just think he's, he's uh, went away from football too much now for... If it gets back to it, it's a great program. Uh -huh. Everyone, everyone watches it in New Year. So, and do you get it? Do you get it everywhere you go? Yeah, I get it. I, I done an advert there for six months for the boilers and all that, and that was all I got. You know, fix uh -huh. my boiler. So, for six months, uh, I got the where's the birds never, never get asked. I never get asked where's the birds. It was always go fix my boiler. Uh -huh. So that was good. Brilliant. On to the football, mate. Uh, grew yeah. up in Milton. Yes, I did. What I was that like growing up? It was good. It was a good place when I grew up. I mean, I, I don't know what it's like now. Um, my parents are, are not there anymore. So, um, but yeah, it was great. I mean, all the doors, all my doors, everyone's doors were opened and the neighbours could go in and keep an eye on you. And it was good. It really was good. I enjoyed growing up in Moulton. It wasn't, there was no money. Uh -huh. um, my parents didn't have any money, but, you know, I had a lot of love and, and it kept me right. And was it just football constantly? No, it was football playing the street. Uh -huh. um, not organised football. No. Um, it was uh, playing the street and we used to go and play, you know, 10 aside, 12 aside, first to 21 and all that. Uh -huh. And I think that's where I learned how to play football because it was red ash. It was a lot, it was bumpy and bobbly and, you know, and yeah, well, I suppose it's the same nowadays. You know, it's like the old boys in the estate. Mm -hmm. If you don't control it, they just come through you. Uh -huh. So that's where I learned how to control the ball, really. Do you think that's what's missing with the kids these days as well? I think so. I think. I think the government's got a lot to do with it. I think, you know, I think up to 13, 14, the kids shouldn't be paying for football. No. You know, I think they should just let them go and play football. And people say to me, I like seeing that organised football and six aside pitches and all that. And I'm saying, I don't. I, I'd rather see there's a big waste ground be, beside it. I would rather see kids playing on that. You know, yeah. like what I used to do, we used to get the jerseys down or just anywhere there was goalposts, we used to go and play football. And so when did it get serious for you? Was it, was it juniors that you started them? I, do you know what? I never played football till I was I was nineteen. I never I played in the, I played in primary school in Saint Augustine's where I grew up. Um, I was there for I played two years I think in the primary school, and we won a couple of trophies, which is the only time they've ever won. And uh, and then I get sent off. And my dad was quite annoyed with me, so I never played football. And in the days back then, everyone played Saturdays. Like juniors, amateurs, juniors, professionals, all played Saturdays. So I never played football. I used to go and watch Celtic every week. Right. That was all I'd done. Uh -huh. Home yeah. and away and my, my dad and my uncle, so it was, it was really good, you know. So when did it start? When did you start playing then? Was I was the Celtic game, you know, before the the underground heat and all the Celtic game got cancelled one week. And uh, and I'm walking through Glasgow and some of my pals were there. And they asked me to come and play football and, and that's what I did. I went away and played. The manager was going to get me a couple of beers after it. So, so that was a cool that one. Was, that, uh, was, that, that was my first pay with the town of tax man. That was my first. <laughs> I, was, I was easily bribed. So uh -huh. um, yeah, it was good. And then after that, was it Celtic Park gave it up? No, I, 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 I gave up. I played, and um, there was five scouts watching the boy that I was playing against that day. Right. Um, it was a team called the Two Hundred Club, and I played a couple of games. But that that day, there was five scouts watching this boy, and I had no bad game. So they were all one men. Junior clubs were one me to sign and professional clubs want me to go on trial. I went trial with Patrick Thistle. Bertie Old told me I wasn't good enough. We 10 30, did you? You're not brilliant, good enough. Brilliant. You're not good enough. So <laughs> you'll never make it. And that's when I realised that um, I was going to play football because I knew I was better than the, than the team I had. I knew. Right. Um, did that spur you on him saying I that? Did, I, I, did, I did. But that, was, that was my kickstart, if you know what I mean. So, what was his reasons behind that, do you think? So I, was like, I, used to, I, was, I was like a swan vest a match. <laughs> Honestly, I had ginger hair, <laughs> and I was uh, so thin. Uh -huh. But you know, you can. Uh, it was one of them. I went went to St. Mun on trial. I uh, played one game, good game, and then I played against Morton and get sent off. And I thought I'd blown it. And the manager Jim Clint at the time says, "We knew you had the ability. 
we didn't know if you had the bottle, so um, f for some reason when I got sent off, I, I was, that was just the reason they signed me, because mm -hmm. so I, I had a heart to, see, to play in, professional football. See, playing in the juniors, because yes. I think Kenny Dalglish and that got sent <coughs> into the juniors yes. as well. Do you think that's something that could still happen with the younger kids? Is it toughen you up or how? It toughens you up, but can you imagine the boys playing nowadays? Uh -huh. You know, they brought up. I look at the pitches and some of the pitches I played on, they wouldn't even train on it now. Um, so I, I think it's wrong. There's, you see a lot of kids coming in now with Ferraris and all that, and you think, where's the motivation? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't I don't get it. I, they're, they're giving the money to the kids and the boys think they've made it. And they've not, they're not anywhere near the first team, which yeah. I think is so wrong. Um, I don't know how they would get around it because there's that much money in the game now that people are just saying my agent will move me, mm -hmm. which is wrong. You know, I, th I think football should be first and foremost. And then the money, the money takes care of itself. I'll, I'm a great believer in that. So signing for St. Man, um, yeah. First thing you done was fix the barn, wasn't it? Fix the barn in my first wage. That's, yes. that's got mere highlights. Got mere highlights. <laughs> that's got mere highlights. Got mere highlights. People say what's the highlights? <laughs> that's <see> every month. <laughs> <laughs> so what was it? Ginger before? <laughs> I'm ginger. I'm ginger. I was like a swan vest of match, honestly. <laughs> so what, the first so, pay straight and get, get the hair aye, done? Aye, was it? it was straight and got it done. Got, and, and it was curly and I tried to get it straightened and my usual crap, but it was, it was good. It was, uh, you know, if they'd straightened us back in the day, I'd have been a lot more damaged than what I did do. <laughs> see, <laughs> <laughs> see, coming up, see if you came up in an academy or not, did you think it would have took no, the sort of player? I made it. Uh, do you not think so? Why not? I think I'd have had the attitude, right, the right attitude to do that, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I've got a lot of respect for people, but I, I see a lot of people in football that are arrogant, ignorant people. And um, and if one of them told me to go and do something, you know, that I, she gave me my big boy. What and, you I, and he was great, and I used to give him money and all that. And, and all the boys used to love it when I was at Celtic, because I used to, they were having a night out, and I used to give him 50 or 100 quid or something. I'd go, right, go and have a good night, boys, but tomorrow morning, I want to know everything about it. No, I'd, so I'd, I'd, I'd sit there, me and Granny, and you know, I'd be sitting waiting for the stories, and, and that was good. Brilliant. And the boys loved it, you know, because you've got to treat them with a bit of respect. But I'm, I'm a one off. I don't know if there's many players that would, you know, there's a lot of arrogant people there and just fling stuff at the boot boys. Mm -hmm. And I, and if I'd have got one of them, <laughs> it, it, I'd probably flung a bit back at them, you know, so <laughs> yeah, I might not have made it. So how was it in St Man going into your first professional club? Was it the, the boys tough on you or was it...? Oh I tough on Jimmy Bone was horrendous on me, but I didn't realise he was teaching me, you know, and because I'm not the biggest player and, and I, I always wanted to play up front. I was in midfield for three years, right. three and a half years, and uh, I said I want to play up front because Frank McDougall going up wouldn't do anything in the game, but he would score a goal and he would get the headlines, and I thought, I want them. And I'd that, get a wee bit at the bottom, Frank McAvey, any money much, and I'd be like, no, I want the headlines. Mm -hmm. So that was it. And then Jimmy was teaching me, and he was good, it was good to me, but he, he, I didn't realise at the time. It, it's, in the days, some of the boys went out their way to teach you and give me a bit of knowledge that he had, you know, because Jimmy wasn't the biggest player in the world, and he used to teach me how to jump before the defenders and all that, and get up and, and stop waiting for jumping and all that kind of stuff. And you don't realise it, you know. It's invaluable. Uh, we hidden gems. Yeah. Uh -huh. You don't get that as well anymore. No, it's the older no. players helping younger no, players, eh? No, it's, um, no, you don't get it. And it's wrong. That's what I think is a big thing about the um, reserve teams football. I, I, you know, when I was coming back for injury, if I played in the reserve game, the boy that I'm playing with, playing with side, you know, I, I learnt it when, when I played with Jimmy Bowen and people like that. They teach you, you learn so much in one game, mm -hmm. more than what you ever do in, in a season with the under 20s or something, you know, because um, these boys have, have done it all and they're, they're, they're teaching you how to make moves and, you know, and when to go and when not to go and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, it was invaluable. But one of my first things that Jimmy Bone taught me was uh, don't put roll jacks on your nut, nuts, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I was I had an injury and he gave me some roll jacks and told me to rub that. It was all right. That will never happen again. That's for sure. For a couple of weeks oh, after that. And, I, and I'm kidding on. It's no balling me, wasn't I? I'm in for a shower. I'm in for a shower, and that made it worse. Oh, it's horrible. Oh, it's horrible. And now the boys are laughing. I'm just kidding on it. It's no balling me. <laughs> so you're flying for St. Mun and um, yeah. See, when you're a boy for Milton and you hear the hammers are after you, do you were you getting well, too old thinking it was another gang? The biggest for... problem for me was the biggest problem for me was playing for St Mun and going to Celtic Park because that was where I grew up, you know. Hmm. And uh, and it was so surreal to go there. Um, and I get told that Celtic were going to sign me before West Ham. 
Right, I got told this my last game when I was at St Mum and uh, and the same Judas, I mean Morris Johnson. <laughs> the same me more. Um, David Hate was, but I got told it was my last game for St Mum, for St Mum and uh, that wasn't to be. And I went down the same for Luton. And uh, thankfully the chairman of Luton slapped me in the back of the head and says, welcome to Luton, Macca. And I thought, who was this guy? And it was the chairman. And I looked amazing and I thought, nah, I'm not training for him, you know. Uh -huh. So thankfully, and then when I walked out, St Mun says that West Ham were interested and I didn't know anything about them. So if I had a sign for Luton, I wouldn't have known about West Ham. Mm -hmm. um, so there was no... Were you a bit worried about moving away from home or was no, it London no. at a canter or a No, no, it wasn't, it wasn't London, it was just me. I wanted to challenge myself. I had five seasons at St mm -hmm. and I was ready to move. It was, um, you know, I could, I could have stayed at St Mun and just, you know, uh, played myself out here. Mm -hmm. But I wanted, you, when you're playing well and you want to challenge yourself against the best, and the best was in England. Mm -hmm. And um, after Celtic, you now I came in for me, I wanted to challenge myself against the best. And it was, at that time, it was one of the top players down there. So I went down to England and, and uh, it was great. I loved it, you know, I just loved everything about it. Did you go down on your own? I went down my own for the first week, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was various. No, and then I came back up here and asked a girl to come down with me because it was a big lonely place, uh -huh. London. Um, so I asked this girl to come down with me and she did, so it was, it was all right. And you formed a formidable partnership with wee hottie, Tony Cotty. Tony, Tony was different classes with him. I spoke to him yesterday. I'm, I'm with him quite a lot now. We all, you know, it's, although that team never won anything, we came so close to win the league, but it, it feels like. The, we won because teams that win, they've got this bondage, you know, this bond together bondage. <laughs> that's, that's, sorry, it's just, just where I came from. Now. It's just, uh, just so early. No, it's, um, no, it's, they've got this bond that's, uh, that's very strong. And West Ham had it. And I've, I, you know, to be honest, when I went down there, the boys, I was a lot stronger accent than what I have now. And when I went down there, the boys couldn't understand the word. The, actually, Ray Stewart was, who's from Perth. He was translating and he kind of understand him, you know, and he was translating for me, so. And he said, no, the boys think you want, you want to fight them. I'm saying, what? I said, every time I'm shouting for the ball and all that, uh -huh. they think you're too aggressive, so. Right. And did you hit the ground running there straight away, mister? Yeah, well, I think, listen, that's why I, I, I can't believe that nowadays they say that players take time to adapt and adjust. Oh, what a nonsense that is, you know. I think I just, so, huh? I think so. Um, I couldn't, me and Tony didn't know about each other and, or anything but I think good players can play with each other and I hit the ground running first game first home game I scored two and that was me and then it took Tony a bit more longer to adjust because um, Tony was an out and out striker just a an out just a poacher mm -hmm. and uh, and I was used to it's a man leading from the front the way they're doing now high press and all that and I'd done that myself and I was complaining because I was shutting the full back down and and these days you could pass it back to the keeper. And it was easy, too easy for the fullback to pass it to the keeper. And I was saying, Tony, you've got to, you've got to shut the keeper down and, and get the defense, the midfield to push on. And, and uh, it took us about half a dozen games. And then we had a, meet, we had a meeting, just the players. And uh, no, no coaching staff, and that's what we'd done. We, had, we got it sorted. And, and that's when we started the really high press, the whole team done it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we went 19, 18 games unbeaten. So it was... You know, for West Ham, that was and pretty see, awesome. See, in the days, would it be playing a Saturday and then everyone out together? No, I well, used to do it, but, you know, I think what, what beat us for the league that year was the weather. The weather was terrible. Um, and we couldn't, we never played for ages. We had four replays against in the Cup against Ipswich. I mean, it's not been, no. it wouldn't happen now. We had four replays against Ipswich. We had two against Man United and we, we beat them. And so we were progressing in the tournaments. And it was wrong because we should just have went for the league. Too many games. Uh, aye, but we only played 14, 15 players uh -huh. on the season. And so you were out all weekend, so you'd have been there. I was out. <laughs> I was out. Well, it, it, it curtailed it a little bit because for six weeks we had to play Saturday, Monday and Wednesday. Right. Now, can you imagine the players nowadays? Morning. Ah, you know, they don't want to play two games a week. We yeah. had to play three because it was that back, there was such a backlog. Um, and it wasn't just us, it was, you know, it was uh, a, a few other teams. But no one in the league played as much as us. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's what cost us the league. 
And you yourself, sitting top goal scorer behind yeah. big Gary Lineker? Well, Gary, I, I always say I was top goal scorer because Gary scored 13 penalties or something. Right. And then it, no counting them there? Nah, I don't count nah. them. Nah. Mine was off your own play. Right. So that's oh, top. were there any penalties now? No penalties, they didn't take penalties, no. Nah. So were you a penalty box striker or was it? I was just, no, I was more I was more a team player. I was I created, I, I must have made, I don't know, 15 to 20, 20 goals, 20 odd goals. So. Do you wish you were more selfish now? Nah, nah. I got offered, a couple of teams offered me money to, to for gold, per goal. And I said I couldn't take it because I just had been greedy and all that. And, mm. and it would take it away from me. I'm not that kind of player. I'm a, I'm a team player. How did you find the step up for going from St Mirren to the Premier League in England? Was it, was it a big jump? Nah, not really. It was pretty easy. Was it? Uh -huh. What, playing with better players now? Playing with better you? players. I went down there, you know, the first day of pre season training, they got the ball out. And I was, I, you know, I was waiting in somebody cast or somebody was filming it for a laugh, you know. And, uh -huh. and the days a big programme was Jeremy Beadle, you know, and I thought he was in the cupboard or something because <laughs> I'm saying in Scotland, you don't get the ball for two weeks. Uh -huh, just you run. don't get near it, you just run. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he said, no, no, it's all right. You, and it's amazing how much you lose your touch and, and your holidays. And that's what we've done, just passing it and passing it. And, and we get a ball and he said, don't worry, you run in the afternoon. And it was, it was good in the days, you, could, you still ran. But it was, it was great for me, everything was football. Two touch, we stopped the ball, it's a free kick to the other team. And everything, every day it was just relentless. And, and, it, you know, and, and it's brilliant, it was great for me because that's the way I, I was playing. So Munn were a good football team. Uh -huh. So I, got, I was uh, educated well, if you like. So. It was, um, and of course, when you get down there and start scoring goals, everyone loves you. And that's what I was going to say, the fans down yeah. there are fanatical, yeah. didn't they? Yeah. Brilliant. It was down there on Friday night and they were all singing, there were 300 people and they were all singing my name, it was great. Was it at West Ham that you started to get this sort of celebrity status? Because I think it was Terry yeah. Wogan you were on, wasn't it? How did that come about? There was no TV, show, there was no TV coverage, so right. I scored 14 goals or 15 goals before the TV came back on. They were arguing over about 60 grand or something, <laughs> it was embarrassing. <laughs> so, you know, and nowadays it's like people go, what? I said, yeah. It was, I don't know what it was, a hundred grand. I don't know much of what arguing over, but it was, it was something stupid. Right. And they did a lot of money, obviously, but... And the first game back was against was us against Man United, I think it was. Right. Uh, and so. what about the Terry Wogan thing? Were you on, did you go Well, that's the reason I went on it, because I was just about to make my debut and there was no TV. Nobody knew nobody knew who, who I was or what I looked like. And uh -huh. West Ham fans did. Uh -huh. um, but. You know, it was uh, they, they stopped somebody on a bridge, you know, and they were saying, "Who's the top goal scorer in the Premier League or the First Division?" They said, "Oh, Mikey Dugay and all that." And can you pronounce my name? And they said, "What does he look like? Big guy with a beard, no?" <laughs> Nobody knew what I looked like. So, could so. you in London? Could you go out without oh, getting recognised? It was great. Was it brilliant? Yeah. Uh -huh. Now we're on Morgan. Morgan changed my life. Right. Overnight, just changed. There was twenty-three million people watching brilliant. the program, and it was on a Friday night, and the manager let me go on Morgan. I was on with Dennis Law. Who the people compared me with them, you know. I never, re I never really reached Dennis Heights really in football. But to be fair, Dennis stayed in afraid a lot more than me. No, I'm like, <laughs> only kid. <laughs> only joke. <laughs> only joke. Um, no, it was, uh, it was, it was good to go in with Dennis because I knew him, and it was good fun. He, he presented me with a young player of the year and all that up in Scotland. So um, it was good to go in there. And it, we had a laugh, to be honest. I'm, when I look back on it, I'm, I'm, I've got a Carte suit on, grey Carte suit, Carte tie and shirt and shoes. Oh, I look like an absolute pleb. <laughs> I thought I looked great. Good fun at the time, yeah. I thought I looked great at <laughs> the time, you know. So but, after that, is that when the... Well, that's that was on Friday night. I played on the Saturday. On Sunday, my mother was going to Australia and she had a four-hour layover at Heathrow. Um, so I said, I'll come and meet her for a bit of lunch. So I went to meet her and I walked in the airport and it was just all the yeah. old ladies wanting photos and... Get off autographs and uh -huh. it was incredible that just overnight, you know, because that, that, a lot of football people knew knew me, but the, the rest of the world didn't. And because of Wogan, you know, it was 23, 24 million people. It's a big, massive machine. So it was good. Was that after that, was you started getting celebrity pals at Ray Winston? Yeah. You were quite pal. No, well, Ray, Ray was a big West Ham fan, you know, he was a big West Ham, Russell Brand, it was his hero as well. And, uh -huh. You know, it was good. So would you go out with Ray in that on a Saturday night? <laughs> Ray was nuts. He's a big hustler. He's Essex boy. Good fun. Was he? Uh, any other pal celebrities that would be there? No, the, Danny Dyer. No, I know Danny and all them. I know Danny and uh -huh. Tama Hussein. And I know I quite a lot of the boys. boys uh, it's did, good. How much did you enjoy that living down there and doing well on the pitch? And then no, these these guys it? are all the same. They're all the good. They're all good pals, you know. Uh -huh. It was good. Uh -huh. good fun. Was it around that time you were pally with George Best as well? 
George hit me the same agent, mm -hmm. the same business manager, Bill McMurdo. So um, when I went down there, George actually looked after me. <laughs> Well, that's so dangerous, it's, uh, isn't it? dangerous. It's, it explains a lot, though. Uh -huh. it explains an awful lot, but it was good. It really was. It's a great place in in Dover Street called Blondes. Don't need to say it anymore. <laughs> Bro, it was great. It was really was. beautiful restaurant and wine bar. It was good. Uh -huh. Would you change you anything now? But going out all the time. Ah, I don't know. In Colchester once. <laughs> 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 never, did, never did that again. I'll be the cool chest, I understand. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> doing well for West Ham. And yes. So, why, why leave? Just for the pool of Celtic? Celtic, yeah. When did you Celtic first hear that? Um, I'd signed about three, three contracts for West Ham and no money. Right. Uh, I was getting rises, but I wasn't getting signed on fee. And, uh, and I'm saying, like, you've got to get signed on fee and you've got to do this. And, and uh, it wasn't to be. And he just said to me, um, Celtic's in for me. Is there no way you were staying after you heard that? Yeah. Were you desperate to go? I was, de well, no, I was Celtic. I love West Ham, I absolutely loved them, but Celtic was my club and I knew it was going to centenary year. And I knew that they were just knocked out of the League Cup, so I had a wee bargain until we were amazing. So, um, yeah, it was good. I got, well, I thought I'd got what I wanted, but I never got paid, but it was all right. <laughs> How come you, you never got paid? Because there was a deal done with Celtic, that was the reason I left. I thought, when I signed for Celtic, I thought it was there to, to my career finish, because mm -hmm. that was my club. It wasn't, the, it wasn't the, the board of today, it wasn't the, the Celtic as today. It was the, the old miserable sods, remember? You know, the Kellys and the Whites and all that. You know, like, I'm not going to get too much in there, but they, they promised me money and I didn't get it. Wow. Um, so basically, I came, I came back for a lot less than what I was get, getting in England. And was it only the pool of Celtic or was the big Billy have something to do with that? Billy, as well? Billy was my idol and you know and and I knew it, you know, I knew it'd be great for my dad and and my family. So the proudest moment ever in football, people say what's your highlight and that, but it, the proudest moment for me was my, my debut at Celtic Park. When I looked up and seen the directors the old board moving and let my dad and my uncle sit in the director's box because they took me everywhere, mm -hmm. you know, and so that was uh, that was magnificent for me. Brilliant, eh? Mm. How was Big Billy as a manager, was he? Brilliant, great. Absolutely adore him. Find me every week. <laughs> 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 I, was, I was always late on a Monday. I what? was always late on a Monday. Back down in London? Coming from London. I was always there. I mean, I just... I didn't realise... Uh, we made the squad so tight. Because they were... You know how you do the... The, the Grand National and everyone picks numbers out of half? Uh -huh. Or the numbers of Grand National. They were doing that with me on a Monday morning. To see what minute I came in at, because <laughs> I was always late. So some did one, some did up to up to thirty minutes and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. All the players. So. <laughs>